Hi, I'm Clint Finley with SiliconANGLE. We're here live on theCUBE at Node Summit in San Francisco. This is the first Node Summit. It's dedicated to the new development language or development platform, uh, Node.js, which is, uses JavaScript as a server-side uh, programming language. I'm joined today by Tim Caswell. He's the community manager at Cloud9 IDE. And before that, he was involved with porting uh, Node.js to uh, WebOS, HP's uh, mobile operating system, and he's been involved with Node, uh, the Node community since the earliest days. He also runs a website called How to Node, which has uh, various uh, tutorials on Node.js, and he's uh, really active at Cloud9 and uh, evangelizing Node and helping people learn about Node. So, uh, Tim, what? We we just start off with okay. with uh, you talking a little bit about what attracted you to Node in the first place and why uh, you got so excited about it. Okay. So at the time, I was working in a, just a PHP web development job. We had to support IE6 and old version of PHP. And, and as a developer, that was rather painful to me. So in my free time, I'd go home and just experiment with new technologies. And V8 had just come out, and I thought it was a cool technology for JavaScript. So I was looking for someone doing V8 on the server. And I looked around on Google, and I found this project called V8 CGI, and there were a few others. And basically, they were all trying to take the same model that Python and Ruby does and do it in JavaScript on the server. And I'm like, that's not very interesting. And they were, they were kind of buggy, and they weren't really supported. And then I came across Ryan's website, nodejs.org. And there he had this radically different object mo this, uh, uh, event model, where it's non-blocking I.O., just like the browser has. And I'm like, now that's something different. That's something cool. And so I started using it, and it actually worked, more or less. I mean, back in this day, Node's API changed almost daily. But it was, it was really fun. And so I just got hooked on it. I started writing modules for it, because it, it didn't have anything. The, I needed a, a database, and at the time I was using Postgres. So I implemented the Postgres protocol in JavaScript so Node could talk to the, to the database. And just went from there over the years. I've just been using it ever since. Yeah, so one of the things you built was uh, how to Node, which, is writ which runs on your own blogging engine that you wrote in Node.js, right. is that right? right? And you've yes. open sourced that, that's on, on GitHub. Yes. And it uses Git as its backend, or as its uh, database? Correct. So how to Node is just, it, Basically, it, take, it takes a Git repo, and there's an article, there's a folder called articles, there's a folder called authors, and they're written in Markdown. It assumes a certain structure, and then whenever a web request comes in, it will figure out which SHA, because you can put the Git SHA in the URL, and so you can read an article at any version of history, and it will render as HTML. So it's actually not that different from how GitHub itself works when you're just browsing a, a, a project, except it's rendered like a blog. And then the comments and everything else is just using external service, and so the Node engine is just rendering HTML. Oh, and what's the name of that platform? So that, so that, so that's the Wheat engine. Wheat engine. Uh, is anyone else using that yet? Yeah, it's been used. I've seen about five or six different blogs use it. I recognize it because they usually they don't change my CSS style, and I'm like, I recognize that theme. Cool. And I never meant for Wheat to be a a program for other people to use. I just open sourced it because I figured, well, it might be useful to someone. And, and then now people use it. Yeah, that seems to be a pretty common story with, with right. Node.js stuff. Right. So uh, w w the main thing I really wanted to talk to you about, though, is, is what your advice is for developers who want to learn Node.js. Because as we, we had just talked earlier with Michael Rogers and uh, new, new Jobs for, uh, from uh, the Node firm, and, which you're also involved in. Right. And there's just you know a big shortage of Node talent. So you know how can people who want to learn Node get get up to speed? Um, so if you want to learn Node, I think a very good place to start is is you need to understand what Node is good for and what Node is not good for. A lot of people come to Node with misconceptions about what it's used for, and it's just it's just not good. And over the years, the one thing that I've discovered is that people new to Node often don't know JavaScript as well as they thought they did. In the, in the browser, like you have, you have these experienced developers who've done front-end development, maybe for years and years, and they're really good at it. But in the browser, there is very little actual asynchronous work. You, you have a mouse event, and you react to that. You have a key press event, you react to that. You may go do some Ajax, 
give it a callback and get the result, but that's it. In the browser, you don't want to make an AJAX and then depend on that, do another AJAX and then just have like 10 nested AJAX calls because the performance would be terrible because the latency on each of those calls can be like 500 milliseconds. So in the browser, there's very little of this nested asynchronous function pattern. And so people don't learn how to do that in JavaScript as well. And then they come to Node, and they discover that, well, before there was FS read file, to open a file, you had to first do FS open, give it a callback, that would give you the file descriptor. And then you had to call FS read, give it an offset, give it the file descriptor, give it a buffer, and it was, it was like one-to-one -one with the C API. And you'd have like this little recursive loop here and these nested callbacks here, and it was like 100 lines of code just to read a file. And people have a really hard time understanding the JavaScript that does that to be able to use the Node API. So I would highly recommend having a firm understanding of closures and callbacks, the run to completion model, the way that single threaded event loops work, because the Node API itself is actually pretty simple. It's, it's a very small API, it's very to the point, and it's easy to understand. That's not usually the hard issue. And then, once your team has a good firm understanding of these parts of JavaScript, you can get a lot further. How well do you need to know JavaScript before you start learning Node? I mean, you, you can start learning right away. It's just... Without any previous JavaScript experience? Right. Like, I've, I've taught a lot of people who've, who have come to JavaScript because of Node, and sometimes they're easier to teach because they don't have preconceived notions. Luckily, Node's JavaScript model isn't that different from the browser, so that, it's not too bad. What resources would you point people to to get started? So there's good books on JavaScript. Uh, I have a lot of JavaScript articles on how to node. I like, I like Marion's book, uh, the big yellow one, Eloquent JavaScript. It teaches, it teaches ECMAScript 3, which is the older JavaScript, but it teaches the, the cores and the principles. That's a really good one for people who don't know JavaScript at all. I, I, I love that book. It's, it's, you know, it's a good the, book. The online version of it has the, the interactive right, tutorials. Right, right. And uh, yeah, it, well, it, it covers computer science in general and not just JavaScript. So it right. introduces a lot of, right, right. of concepts. So somebody who's an absolute beginner, that's a really good place and my, to start. My favorite part of that book is actually in the intro. He has this paragraph that's, that talks about what is programming. And he's, what was the quote? He says, like, the, the art of programming is taming complexity. And this is extra true when you're dealing with a node program because of the asynchronous nature of having callback continuations everywhere. Your biggest problem in scaling a node program is not performance. Your biggest problem is keeping your code complexity sane and bug-free. And that really is the art of programming. And I'm glad that he teaches that. It's not just a, here's the syntax of JavaScript. This is what a function does. Uh, so we have to take a break here pretty soon. Okay. Uh, so it's howtonode.com is your website? Howtonode.org. Oh, dot, howtonode.org and cloud9.com? And the cloud9 one is nodebits.org. Nodebits.org. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for Thank your time. You.